everyone, and welcome to CTV Wide World of Sport coverage of the Molson Indy Weekend. Our cameras are here in Toronto on a warm summer Saturday afternoon. And few places in the world can brag of a more convenient or pretty a location for a motor race. We're located near Ontario Place, actually at the Canadian National Exhibition Grounds, just a mile from downtown Toronto on the banks of Lake Ontario. It is a tremendous sight for a race weekend, and the fans are turning out in droves to appreciate not only the great weather, the great facility, but of course the talents of all of these drivers here in Toronto. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ron Roosh, and welcome to the CNE and Exhibition Place for today's racing. Actually, what we're going to bring to you this afternoon is uh, something a little special. This is the Players General Motors Motorsport a series. It's a 15 race series for $500,000 in prize money. These are stock showroom type cars. Pontiac uh, Firebirds as well as uh, Chevrolet Irox Z Camaros. This series is very, very competitive and to tell us a little bit more about it, upstairs right now to the man who's going to be calling today's race, Pat Gonzalez. Pat? Thank you, Ron, and good afternoon, everyone. Competitive qualifying was indeed that. Just a second separating the fastest 12 drivers in less than five seconds. Back to the 40th starter here this afternoon. Working with us in the booth is the veteran of Indy car racing and a man who has seen many showroom stock series before, Paul Page. And, Paul, this has got to be a big thrill for these drivers running on the same track that the Indy cars will be on tomorrow. You know, it's very exciting because here is an opportunity to rub shoulders with world driving champions and Indy car winners, but it's also an important time to pose, to be seen, because when the Indy cars come to town, they bring with them the international motorsports press, the important car owners, the important sponsors. And in a series like this, where the driver's skill is really what makes the difference, you have a chance to show off. And maybe, if you do it just right, you'll further your career. Well, Paul, this is probably the one time that you can do about 200 kilometers an hour along Lakeshore Boulevard in a Camaro or a Firebird and not be afraid of getting a speeding ticket. Ron? All right, and of course, the other side light to that is immediately after they do those speeds, they jump into that same car, and at highway speeds, they drive home. That's the showroom nature of the series. The series leader is Ron Fellows. He hails from Mississauga, Ontario. Currently, he is the series leader ahead of a, a Quebecer, uh, Marc Dancos of Saint Laurent, Quebec. Ron Fellows also turned in the fastest time today. That, that doesn't mean he has the pole position. That belongs to the sixth fastest qualifier. They invert the top six positions. But Ron Fellows is fastest qualifier once again. He's the man to beat, and he's with Jack Aroot down in the pit area. And, Ron, for Ron Fellows, it's almost as if doing well is not the best thing to do. Ron, you're going to be starting with a fast time, but going back in sixth position on a very, very tight course. What do you do those first couple of laps, especially down in the Prince's Gate turn? We've always seen trouble down there. Uh, we're going to be watching the mirrors as well as trying to move up a little bit. Uh, it's going to be important to get a very, very good start, uh, but it's very, very close. Uh, it's it's going to be tough. Tight quarters racing here, and it takes its effect and its toll upon brakes. Is there anything that you can do to try and keep some brakes in these cars for the last maybe two or three laps? I think what we'll try and do is, is as we hopefully move up, we're going to uh, pace ourselves a little bit with the brakes. Uh, in practice, I found that uh, passing somebody and then spending a lap or so just going easy and then attacking again seemed to work fine, but it's still going to be very, very difficult. Well, a difficult may be an understatement. For one thing for Ron Fellows, as we noticed in his car here, is he brought his suitcase with him. Maybe that's to take all the money back to Miss Agua, Ontario. All right, thanks very much, Jack. And the story, of course, is can Ron Fellows thread his way through those six spots and maintain his lead as the series leader in this championship year? We'll be right back with the start of the race. Side by side, it's Richard Spinard who grabs the lead. We've got a crash on the start. Car smacking the outside retaining wall. We've got a car there, a Paul Page, that's really smacked the right rear side as we had a bit of a shunt there on the green flag. Heavily damaged. I'm not sure that it's not something that can't be repaired, but of course, in a short race like this where you have no real opportunity to go into the pits, well, if you can't get it repaired quickly, now he's under power that is, and uh, is at least going to try to get going. That's Drew Fessar in the Acklands car. He does have it going again. And uh, that, of course, was the excitement here on the start. There you can see the green flag coming out. It happens about mid-pack as a couple of cars come together. 
Professor into the wall. A couple of other cars involved, but the drivers behind him doing a nice job. They have red flagged it as we have got a parking lot down at the hairpin at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard. Well, it looks like we have the result of actually a second spin down here as one car nose into the wall and now everyone else trying to get around. So the question I'd have to ask is what will the stewards decide to do about this situation? It seems like they really are going to have to stop the race and make sure that the main straightaway is cleared as well as this corner. But now this log jam for the moment is clear. While it was yellow caution flags flying, here is Spinard. He is the leader. Our conjecture there on the red flag, obviously incorrect. Spinard, 42, the race leader in that red and white Camaro. Things starting to string out now. There's Richard Spinard. The second place car is Ron Fellows. So Fellows getting a jump up into that second place position. Back into the third place car, just going through turn one. And then it is Randy McDonald in car number 86. He has moved up nicely. He started back in 10th, and McDonald has now moved into the fourth place position. There you can see single file along Lakeshore Boulevard. Spinard is the leader. Fellows, the fast qualifier in the second place spot. And then a bit of a gap back to the fourth place driver. That is number 86, Randy McDonald. Spinard and Fellows break into turn number three. That is the hairpin at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard. Well, Ron Fellows obviously uh, picked up the tremendous advantage with all the confusion on that start. The first accident created when one car on the inside just actually on the straight turned to the left and pinched off several other cars, but Fellows worked the traffic as a result of that and then that second spin very well and was able to drop into this second place. Now he's in pursuit of the leader. You're with the leader there, Spinard and Fellows. It's a two-car breakaway right now. The third-place car is actually Ron Fellows' brother, Rob Fellows. And then Randy McDonald, who was the Rookie of the Year a year ago in the Flares Challenge Series, runs back in the fourth-place position. These two drivers, uh, Paul, were teammates a year ago. Fellows ran with Richard Spinard. They were teammates. They would go out there and qualify together. But Fellows, at the end of last year, decided to go and form his own team. He's already qualified fastest in three of the events, including the one here at the Molson Indy. It's a two-car race across the start-finish line, heading it to turn one, and here is Fellows on the inside of Richard Spinard. He will take the lead. That's really remarkable, that particular pass. I would have thought that by coming to the inside, that really would have been a position that he would have been pushed out of if aggressive driving was, uh, was done by Spinard. But uh, in this particular situation, by going to the inside, he simply was able to outbreak and pick the lead quickly. Spinard trying to chase him back down here on Lakeshore Boulevard, just about a half a car length, separating the two drivers as they get on the brakes to go into the hairpin. Spinard not able to make up much room. Fellows drifts a little wide in the turn. Spinard pulls up alongside and appeared as though they touched body work there, Paul. They are really hammering at each other and perhaps some team strategy coming up because right back in third and closing is Rob Fellows, Ron Fellows' brother. Then it's Randy McDonald, number 86. So very shortly, we are going to have a four-car draft up front. There is Fellows, followed by Spinard. Then Rob Fellows is the third-place car. Then Randy McDonald up there in the fourth-place position. So that gathering at the hairpin on turn number one allowed Ron Fellows to get through in the second. He leads it here as they head out of turn eight. As you suggested, because both Spinard and Fellows were teammates last year, they obviously know one another's style very well. And as a result of that, they can use it. This is the pass for the lead just moments ago. Fellows dives in on the inside of Spinard, who stays out quite wide and gets him under braking going into turn number one. The drivers say those are the two best spots to attempt the pass, turn one and at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard. It is still Ron Fellows, your leader. He is the current series points leader. Spinard in second, followed by Rob Fellows, third. There is Richard Spinard. As uh, we work along Lakeshore Boulevard, the leader, Ron Fellows, you're with Richard Spinard as he tries to chase him down at about 190 kilometers an hour. They'll duck under the second pedestrian bridge and then go to the brakes to slow up for that hairpin. Well, as Spinard closes in here, you notice that the tendency of the car, and it'll be true of all those in this series, is to push or understeer. That is to say that when you start to turn in, the front end of the car still wants to go straight. You can see some evidence of that here, and he's having to pull the front end around a little bit harder. That may be the reason that the pass was made so easily, because when the pass for the lead was made, Spinard moved to the outside, and Fellows was able to just dart past him to the inside. So I think Fellows is handling a little bit better. 
through one of the fastest corners on the Molson Indy circuit, and then heavy braking into turn eight. That's a 90-degree right-hander, and you can see just how close they come to those concrete retaining walls. Still, Ron Fellows, your leader in the blue car, followed by number 42 in the red and white Camaro. That is Richard Spinard. Spinard won this series in its very first year back in 1986, but last year missed one of the events as he was over in Le Mans, France, racing in the 24-hour. Third place driver is Rob Fellows. Let's go to the pits. David Emmerham is the first car out of the pits. And uh, David, what happened? You're in the pits early. Uh, bit of a pile up into the third corner. Uh, five cars deep into the corner. And uh, I went to the outside because I knew there'd be a problem. And then next thing you know, Dankos is sideways uh, in the corner and everything just happened at once. The toe was just totally torn off the front of the car. Your wheels look like they're all akimbo there. I was pushed right into Danko's front corner, and he must have been hit hard. Like, he must, I don't know if he's still out there, but uh, there was lots of damage on that, that corner. They take no prisoners in this Players GM Challenge, gentlemen. Well, Jack, that is the situation, as you heard from David Empreham, that pileup we saw at the hairpin on the opening lap involving Mark Danko, who apparently got his car sideways and then the track was blocked and then all of the other cars piling in there. The drivers did a nice job, Paul Page, of certainly uh, keeping the cars off of each other and uh, we did finally get going. You're with the leader, Ron Fellows, as he runs just ahead of our in-car camera that's in the Motormaster Camaro of Richard Spinard as they work the series of left and right-hand turns, heading back to the start-finish line here on the Molson Indy Circuit. Well, the man who took the uh, greatest uh, advantage of that start, of course, was Fellows, moving from sixth and then into the lead within a lap and a half. Ron Fellows is your leader in the Players GM Motorsport race from the Molson Indy Circuit. We'll be back. Eric, I'm sorry. Forget it. Now, McDonald desperately trying to get his Camaro up to the lead car of Fellows and Spinard. Well, Unlike uh, IndyCar's Formula One, you don't have a wide difference in the automobile, not a, a massive difference in power or handling. These cars are essentially the same. They're a, a spec showroom stock series. Because of that, all you really have is your skill, as now the leaders begin to encounter some of the slower cars on the course, and that gives them an, an opportunity to maneuver in traffic. But the situation is, not only can you, you use an opportunity of, of poking your nose ahead of your competitor on a given corner, and making them think that you have a little more here or there. But at a time like this, it becomes critical because you're going to use those slower cars to ricochet off of, to set someone else up and, and hope that it might get you another 10 or 15 feet further down the course than the fellow who's chasing you. Well, it's still a car length and a half separating Ron Fellows there in the blue car, Spinard number 42 there in the red and white Camaro. There is a lap driver there. That is number 35, Yuri Slonina, who is uh, right in between the second and third place cars and Randy McDonald third and Rob Fellows still back in the fourth place position across the stripe you can see the interval now between Fellows and Richard Spinard you know Spinard has been a factor and in fact he's won both Molson Indy players challenge series events coming into this year the opening year he was involved in a very similar battle with Robin Buck Buck who was started up here in the second row evidently one of the cars that got tangled up in that uh, opening lap shunt in turn number three but Spinard kept holding Buck out there the very first year here and finally he overshot the hairpin at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard and of course something we'll be watching as we get into the closing laps to see how much harder these drivers are going to be pushing these cars and extending the braking limit of the Camaros and Firebirds. You see Spinard now closing right in behind Fellows. He actually had his nose right up against the rear bumper of Fellows' car for a moment there. And what he's doing is anticipating the traffic that lies just ahead. And he's hoping that any opportunity that's giving him, he can take an advantage of it. If he sees even the slightest slowing, then he'll be able to dart out. And of course, as we're seeing other cars and yellow flags displayed around the circuit for the different accidents behind the leaders, that's another thing that you can take advantage of. You can't actually pass in that zone, but you can pull up and be right behind the car in front of you and hope that you can dart out and challenge. They have just lapped the number 90 car of John Kyle, and then the McDonald number 86 still runs back in third. McDonald coming up on that uh, lap driver then it's still Rob Fellows in the 44 car back in the fourth place spot there's McDonald going around the back marker here through the 11th turn back across the start finish line it has been a two car race there's the number 94 car spinning that's Jean-Pierre Doré out of Lorraine Quebec he's got it turned around and will continue 
but uh, we've certainly had uh, some action out here. Here is Spinard and the fellows as they work it on to Lakeshore Boulevard, and I think slower cars are going to be a factor here the rest of the way to the checkered flag ball. I think the slower drivers here, they're, they're all excellent drivers, recognize that on a, on a temporary circuit as this is, unlike a natural terrain circuit, you really have to advise the oncoming traffic as to where to go and how to get around you, and they've been very good about that. There's your top five, Ron Fellows, Bernard, Randy McDonald, Rob Fellows, and Peter Cohen still back there in the fifth place spot. That margin has opened up now to about seven or eight car lengths. Fellows has evidently found a little bit more speed out there, and for the moment, Spinard has lost the draft. He is going to have to try to get up a little bit closer, perhaps having problems with one of those back markers in the uh, tighter sections of the course. Here is the leader, Ron Fellows. Spinard breaking before that 90-degree right-hander. You can see as they come out, they go very near that outside concrete retaining wall. It is still McDonald back in third, Fellows running fourth. You know, the fact that this is, we were talking about temporary circuits versus natural terrain, that this is a temporary circuit, it means that it's, it's a concrete canyon. There is no chance for you to make an error without engaging that concrete wall. And, of course, that's going to do a lot of damage to any car, and certainly to these cars in, in this uh, Players General Motors Motorsports Series. So when you're driving on this circuit, where normally you might let the car drift a little wide, and if you kick up some dust, it's no problem. If you kick up dust here, you're going to pull it off that concrete wall, and your day's going to be over. So you have to be much more precise. And I think that's what we're seeing in Fellows running as the leader, is he's being a little more careful. He's making those turn ends a little tighter, while Spinard, who is obviously very successful here in the past, can be a little more flamboyant and drift it a little further to the wall. In addition, he's running in second place as they engage a car spun just in front of him. You saw how carefully they had to work their way through. But Spinard can be, be more outgoing in his attack here. And if he's going to get up and actually challenge fellows, he's going to have to do it pretty quickly, which means he's going to have to drive a little harder. Okay, well, he did make up some ground that time, Paul, going into the hairpin. But you can see fellows still holding the advantage. They continue to work slower traffic. Ron Fellows and Richard Spinard. It has been a two-car race. We're on lap number 11 of 15, and their fellows into the turn. He appeared to get slowed. They're sandwiched in a couple of slower cars. Spinard trying to chase him back down, but Spinard appears to be having more difficulty with getting around those slower cars. There is your top five in the Players GM Motorsports Series. Fellows and Spinard still going at it for the lead. We'll be back here at the Molson Indy Circuit with the concluding laps. Back here at the Molson Indy Circuit for the concluding laps of the Players GM Motorsports Series. Stop number five for these drivers, Paul. And this race, very critical for Richard Spinard if he has any aspirations of winning the championship this year. You're with Richard now as he closes back up onto the leader. He missed the fourth stop at Shannonville Motorsport Park when he tried to compete in a Porsche Series event at the Niagara Falls Grand Prix. Arrived at the Shannonville Circuit late Sunday afternoon just to see the field heading off to the start of the race. He did not start that event. He desperately needs a strong finish here this afternoon, and a win, of course, would give him maximum points. Well, Spinard is coming to the section of the course that he seems to be very good at as he comes onto the lake shore and that long straightaway that leads to a hairpin. On every of the past five or six laps, he's been able to close in just behind Fellows, as you see him doing now. But then Fellows appears to be handling better through the hairpin and the tighter section of the course. We watch here. This is Spinard's opportunity if he is going to close in and actually get in a challenging position. He's not there now. Now you see fellows under braking. Spinard closes in just a bit more. But now, if it runs true to form of the past several laps, then Fellows will begin now to inch away from Spinard. That can be terribly frustrating when you're running in second place. You know you can get him in one section of the course and then watch him put it half a foot, two feet, and begin to pull away from him. Fellows definitely appears to be the superior driver through that series of right and left-hand turns that uh, brings the drivers from the back section of the racetrack here onto the start-finish straightaway. And there you can see he has stretched it out a little bit. Spinard had closed up at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard. You're with Richard Spinard sitting in the driver's seat as he tries to chase down Ron Fellows for the win here in the Players GM Motorsports Series at the Molson Indy. Spinard has been the winner here in 1986 and again last year. And again, he's pushing it very, very hard here, right to the outside of the racetrack, using every inch of pavement as they come back to the start-finish line. That is 13 laps completed. We've got two to go. Brakes are, of course, a very real concern here because of the very tight turns. You, you can see, especially from the onboard camera shots, 
when we watch Fellows that he actually brakes a little bit early. You can see the flash of his brake lights, and he's just easing down on the brakes, trying not to wear them in, especially the front brakes. These cars are heaviest in the front because the engine is up there, and so you use naturally more front brake anyway on any car, and if you come down too hard, you pitch the whole weight of the car forward, you're using up those brakes, and you're also unsettling the car. So in these particular machines, the best idea is to come down just a little bit easy and get the car to sit down before it turns into the corner. There's the top five. Ron Fellows, Richard Spinard, followed by Randy McDonald, Rob Fellows, and Peter Cohen. That has not changed much here in the last five laps. With about a lap and a half to go in round five of the Players GM Motorsport Series from the Molson Indy Circuit along the shores of Lake Ontario, Ron Fellows, who lives just a few miles from here in the city of Mississauga in that blue Sunoco Gold Firebird Fellows driving the Firebird as he comes off of that left-hand turn. Spinard in the Camaro. And the two drivers who were teammates a year ago are combatants here this afternoon. And right now, Fellows appears to have an advantage. And Spinard has really got his work cut out, of, cut out for him. Paul Page trying to chase him down here as we move into the closing laps. Well, it certainly is a desperate situation, situation for Spinard. He can, in fact, close in during this section, and now he at least can look ahead and see there is the advantage of a slower car line just in front of Fellows. If he can take advantage of those two cars there and use them to close on Fellows, he might actually put himself into a position where he can challenge through the tight section of the course. But it has not been a section that his car has been performing well. There you can see the interval along Lakeshore Boulevard. Fellows and Spinard, that has been the story here this afternoon. Spinard closing it up just a little bit there. Six or seven car lengths now the interval as they come up through turn number four. Heading for that tight 90-degree left-hander at five, and Spinard is trying to pull out all the stops here now, closing up on Fellows. If you're the leader, as Fellows is, you have to be very careful when these slower cars are in front of you. You have a pace, you have a rhythm. You're trying not to slow it down because Bernard is challenging from second place. But if you're not cautious in passing these slower cars, you can get yourself in trouble and lose not only the lead, but the entire race because you end up against the barrier. There was Fellows getting through on the inside of the slower car. Spinard still running behind that back marker as they come out of turn number nine. And Spinard still trying to chase him down. Ron Fellows has now stretched it back out to a good 12 to 13 car lengths as they're heading through turn number 11. And there is the last lap board now being displayed at the start finish line. They are getting the last lap board here at the start finish. And the next time around, it'll be the checkered flag for one of these two drivers. So Spinard still with less than a lap to go here, but uh, he's got an awful lot of ground to make up Paul Page. Well, he has absolutely no choice but to drive this now final lap just as hard as he possibly can. Again, he can see over Fellow's car. He can see those slower cars lying just ahead. For the most part, the slower cars have been very good at marking where the leaders should pass. Here, though, you're seeing the leader being held up. He moves to the outside. Spinard is capable of closing in that much more. Now Spinard is right on his bumper. It is at a section in which Fellows has been better. But let's see what Spinard can do now. There is still more back market traffic line just ahead. Spinard is close to within just four or five car lengths. As they're on the last lap, they'll be looking for the checkered flag the next time across start finish. Fellows still holds the advantage in the blue car, right behind him in the red and white. Camaro is Richard Spinard. This is at the end of the back section, going through that 90-degree right-hander at turn eight. And Spinard has definitely closed it up. But again, as we've seen here, the last several laps, Paul Fellows is the superior driver through this section of the racetrack. It certainly appears that way. As they make this final set of turns now, Fellows should see the checkered flag, and Spinard has virtually no opportunity. Out of the final turn, the checkered flag is out in the Players GM Motorsport Series race from the Molson Indy. Ron Fellows has won it. Richard Spinard right behind him in second. Well, it really was an excellent race that was won in the early laps and some real savvy. You know, you can take so much advantage on a closed course like this of situations like those two first lap situations. We had an accident right at the starting line. That was really behind these two cars. But then on turn three, it tightened up again, and Fellows knew how to get through that just as quickly as he could. That's the kind of thing that a, a veteran driver knows how to take advantage of. Fellows certainly did it, and it's paid off. 
And of course, he made that tremendous pass going into turn number one by the Princess Gates to grab the lead. Spinard, although he challenged after that, uh, simply could not run up with him and uh, get him there at the finish. He did make a valiant effort on that last lap. There are the top five, Ron Fellows, your winner, Richard Spinard second, Randy McDonald third, Rob Fellows fourth, and Peter Cohen back in fifth. Well, Ron Fellows, we can't go on meeting like this. The last time we did a players race together, you won it in Montreal. Congratulations. Yeah, you. Oh, that's great. This is the one I really wanted. Uh, that was a hell of a race. Uh, I was just on the limits with the brakes all the time. Uh, man, first I, lap, first lap looked as if that was the key to your victory. Yeah, it sure was. That was, uh, I was thinking the whole time, Jesus, how are we going to get through these guys? Was like everybody, I was like six from the start. They tangled down at the hairpin, and uh, I just squeaked through, so did Richard. And uh, I'm just so happy for the people of Sunoco, McKenzie, and Woodbine, Pontiac. Uh, this is great. Well, you broke Spinard's streak here. He had two of the first two, and you made it number three here, your first one here. The pressure throughout the remainder of the race. Did you know he was there the whole time? Did you do a lot of mirror driving? Oh, definitely, definitely. I was I was keeping on track of my, my brakes and whatnot. I knew he was a threat. He's a super racer. I've learned a hell of a lot from Richard. And uh, uh, I'm just real happy for the guys, and Harry and... And Gary and Steve is just it's terrific. I love it. I'm real happy. Well, gentlemen, the march to the championship continues with our victor here, Ron Fellows. And joining us on this podium uh, from Imperial Tobacco of Canada, Mr. Don Brown. And, of course, uh, we are honored by the presence on this podium as well of the president of General Motors of Canada, uh, Mr. George Peoples. In fact, first I would ask to offer a word of greeting to all of you here at the Molson Indy and to our race winners today uh, will call Mr. Don Brown to the microphone. Would you welcome Donnie from Imperial Tobacco. Thank you, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I would like to offer our, on behalf of players our congratulations to our three winners here today, who you will meet very shortly. But I would also like to congratulate all of the drivers in the Players Challenge Series for putting on what is probably one of the most exciting races we've ever had. I'm sure you'll agree with that. Mr. Don Brown of Imperial Tobacco. Thank you very much, Don. And now the president of General Motors of Canada, one of the marvelous flag wavers here at the Molson Indy this weekend. Welcome, Mr. George Peoples, to the microphone. George, your turn. Thank you. And it's really been exciting today, and, and the best to all the fans that have turned out today. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure to see the support and the support of our fans coming to see an exciting race series. We're really pleased about it. So from, from uh, GM of Canada, we're very pleased to be a part of this outstanding race series. Thank you. Thank you, George. You betcha. They all deserve a nice round of applause. And now uh, we'll ask Mr. Peoples to take care of the official presentation of our awards, the Players GM Motorsport Series Awards. And we'll start with the man who finished up uh, third overall in the run today out of Oshawa, Ontario, the hostess chip man himself, Mr. Randy McDonald. Well done, Randy. Second uh, today here at the Molson Indy in our uh, Players GM Motorsport run out of Shannonville, Ontario. Would you welcome Mr. Richard Spinard? The Molson Indy Players GM Motorsport Series champion for 1988. Here's that exciting young man out of Mississauga, Ontario, getting his second victory of the year. Would you welcome? The Sunoco man, I guess this time, Mr. Ron Fellows. Well done, Ronnie. Well, the name Ron Fellows is going to be one that's probably on a few indie car managers' list, and perhaps this was his biggest win ever in front of a tremendous crowd and a lot of people watching. Well, if this is, in fact, your chance to show off, he certainly did. He showed he was aggressive. He showed he had the skill to get around this very tight circuit, and he showed that he knows how to win. Look for his name in the record books. Well, Ron, that is it. Ron Fellows is the man of the afternoon as he wins round five of the Players GM Motorsports Series, and a tremendous victory it was indeed for the Mississauga, Ontario driver. And, of course, Ron Fellows uh, enhances his lead atop the overall standings as well. Well, it's been a pretty exciting afternoon here at uh, the CNE in Toronto. The Molson Indy, of course, will be raced tomorrow, and RCTV sports cameras will be here to bring you the full coverage, wire to wire, as it were. We hope you can join us then. On behalf of our whole crew, including Jack Aroot down here in the pits with me, we'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>